G'day guys and welcome to the final episode of The Ideal Load. In part one of The Ideal Load, we spoke briefly about the overall concept of load, what it is and how it affects our athletes. In part two, we discussed the correct manipulation of training variables and the importance of periodization. In this episode, we're going to discuss how to effectively monitor your training loads using different technologies and methodologies that are easily implemented. Also, stay tuned until the very end where I'm going to give you the download link to our free, fully customizable and updatable annual plan to help you periodize and monitor your training loads. So how can you easily monitor your training loads and keep your athletes from overtraining? There are a number of ways to do this, some of which involve expensive technology and require greater data processing time, such as GPS and accelerometers, whereas other methodologies such as heart rate monitoring and the rating of perceived exertion are much more accessible and time efficient. Let's discuss a few of these options in greater detail to help you make the right decision. But firstly, we need to quickly touch again on the different types of data you'll be collecting. If we remember back to the first video in this series, we discussed external and internal workloads, where external loads refer to the work completed by the athlete, irrespective of how the physiological or psychological systems react, whereas the internal load is just that, the physiological and psychological response due directly to the work completed. So how do we measure these things day to day and week to week? External workloads, such as total distance, distance per minute, total high-speed running distance, total time in high-speed running, total sprinting distance, and total time in sprinting, can all be measured using GPS units. These metrics can all be captured automatically by the unit's proprietary software and can be easily viewed for each player wearing a GPS unit. Obviously, this is only achievable if your athletes can wear a commercially available GPS watch or you have access to GPS technology such as a GP Sports or a Catapult system. Differently, player load or body load or simply the total accelerometer counts can also be measured as a total session count or per drill or per week. These counts give you an idea of the total accelerations and decelerations or movements the athlete has completed. Again, this requires the athlete to be wearing the unit during the session. Now, more simply, the number of activities such as tackles, sprints, repeat efforts can be counted per drill or per session and tallied per week. This method can be time consuming and requires a lot of data processing simply because someone has to watch your sessions live or through recorded footage and count the movements one by one. Perhaps most simply, you can record the total time the athletes are active per session. This data will give you an overall picture of the total work time of each athlete for each session per week. The measurement of external workloads can be achieved through the use of some of the most advanced technology or with the use of no technology at all. It is up to you as a practitioner to decide what methodology you are able to best implement and that you think will be the most worthwhile. Now, let's take a look at internal workloads. Arguably, the most common method of assessing internal workload is the rating of perceived exertion, or the RPE. This method simply requires the athlete to retrospectively rate their perceived effort of the entire session or certain parts of the session. Generally, a simple number scale of 1 to 10 can be used. However, this scale was originally designed on a 6 to 20 scale, and this can also be used. Additionally, by multiplying the RPE using the 1 to 10 scale by the total session time in minutes, you can track the total session RPE. This method is commonly used in team sports and is a great way to capture information on how your athletes experience each session. Best of all, it requires no technology and is easily implemented. The data can also be easily graphed and monitored week to week. Heart rate, another popular method of monitoring internal loads. Heart rate straps and accompanying watches are now cheaper than ever and are super accessible. Heart rate can be used to measure how long the athletes spend in certain heart rate zones. For example, how long were your athletes at 80, 90, 95% heart rate max? Now there are other measures of heart rate that can be utilized to monitor loads, such as heart rate recovery, heart rate variability, and training impulse. However, these methods involve a much higher level of data analysis and the science is less than certain about their applicability. Additionally, questionnaires can also be an easy and cost-effective means of assessing internal workloads. Some highly worthwhile examples include the Recovery Stress Questionnaire for Athletes, as well as the Profile of Mood States. You need to be mindful when implementing these questionnaires that they can be prone to over or underestimating loads due to the subjectivity required from the athletes. Similarly, they can be time-consuming for athletes, so you need to be mindful of how frequently you implement them in order to ensure maximum compliance. And most simply, you might find asking the athlete how they feel before each session to be an incredibly insightful question. You could ask them to rate this on a scale of 1 to 10 and then decide how hard you might train them. 
Similarly to measure, measuring external loads, some measures of internal load require some technology and others none at all. Our suggestion is to pick a method and stick with it for a period of time and retrospectively analyse how well you think it works. Now, for some extra reading on how to best monitor workloads, we recommend these three recent articles. You'll be able to find these on Google Scholar or from any other journal database such as scopus.com. And as promised, here is a link to our free, fully customizable and updatable annual plan to help you periodize and monitor your training loads. We'll also release a how-to video for this to help you through the resource, so stay tuned for that. If you want to know more or you missed the previous episodes, check out our YouTube channel and website for all of our other resources. We hope you enjoyed the final episode of The Ideal Load and thanks for watching.